Hi, everybody. This is uh, Dr. Lefkoff from IRGN424 uh, Corporate Finance at UC San Diego's Graduate School of International Relations and Pacific Studies. Uh, today, we're going to take a short look here at how to import some data on bond prices from the internet into an Excel document uh, and then use Excel and some of its predefined functions to actually calculate the price as well as the duration of the bonds for you. Uh, so make things a little bit easier than ha having to actually write out the uh, entire cash flows of the bonds and then computing uh, the net present values manually. Um, so you notice I have my screen partitioned into two here. Uh, the left-hand side is uh, I have an Excel spreadsheet set up for us to form a portfolio of three bonds. Uh, and generally, you'll probably be forming a portfolio of more than three bonds, but this will do the trick for our purposes today. Uh, we're going to track a couple important dates uh, related to the bond contract, the settlement date, which is the date the contract first becomes effective. Uh, and the maturity date, uh, which is the date the last payment uh, of the par value is made. Uh, we'll take a look also at the coupon rate and the yield to maturity. Those are both important in terms of defining the uh, cash flow structure of the bond, as well as the frequency with which coupons are occurring. Uh, are they semi-annual? Are they paid once per year? Um, so we're going to keep track of that. And then you'll notice these columns in yellow here. Um, we're saving because we're going to use the Excel predefined pricing function and duration function to actually calculate these values from everything that we found over here on the internet. So let me go ahead and, uh, and maximize the right-hand side screen here. And right now I'm at the Yahoo Finance website. And we're gonna just go down here to, uh, on the left-hand side, we're gonna look at market data and specifically we'll look at bonds. I'm gonna go over here to the top right to the bond screener, which will let us search for bonds by uh, various criteria. So you can see here, there's a ton of different attributes of the bond you can search by from price to coupon rate, uh, to yield, to maturity range. Uh, so let's suppose for a minute we were interested in treasuries, let's say um, a minimum yield of 2%, maybe because we had a liability to cover that at least implied a cost of capital of 2%. And so we search for bonds and notice right away up here, uh, we'll use this first bond, it's a, it's a US Treasury note. Uh, here's the price, the coupon rate, the maturity, the yield to maturity. Uh, this column measures the current yield, which is actually the yield on only the remaining payments of the bond at its current trading price. Um, credit rating and whether or not the bond is callable. We're going to deal with non-callable bonds for this exercise. Um, notice if I actually click on the bond itself, it gives me a little bit more specific information. For example, uh, the settlement date. Uh, so if we were to purchase the bond today, the uh, contract would go into effect tomorrow, the 23rd. Um, today's the 22nd, FYI. Uh, we can also observe here the frequency of coupon payments for this bond is actually semi-annually, so we're getting two payments per year, which is fairly typical of, of government bonds. Okay, so let me shrink this to the right here. So uh, let's enter our information for our first bond. We know that the settlement date was 1-23-2014. Maturity date was May. May 15th, 2014. Coupon rate was 4.75%. Yield to maturity is real low, 0.03%. The frequency of the coupon payments was semi-annual. Now, uh, you'll notice all these uh, pieces of information are actually defined completely for us, the entire cash flow structure of the bond. So Excel, is able to use a pricing function and you can invoke this by typing equals the word price and then parentheses and you'll notice this bubble shows you uh, all the arguments that you have to put inside the price function the settlement date maturity coupon rate the yield etc so we're going to go ahead put in the settlement date the maturity the coupon rate the yield you'll notice now it's asking for this redemption value here i'm going to put in a hundred that's the par value the face value of the bond and in the frequency, which was our coupon frequency here, was two. And let's just put in a change of basis. We're going to ignore that for now. Okay, and you'll notice it tells us the price of the bond is $101 and about 46 cents, um, which is exactly what the uh, trading price of the bond currently is. So we know Excel's doing a good job there. Uh, we can rely on the pricing function. And if we want to calculate the duration of the bond, which again, uh, is the time-weighted average of present values of the future cash flows. We're going to use a similar way to invoke this function. We're going to write equals the word duration. 
parenthesis, and then again it asks for uh, several inputs into this function. So you can take the settlement date, again the maturity date, the coupon rate, the yield, uh, and the frequency. Again, I'm going to ignore the basis. I can see the duration of this is about 0 0.31 years. Now let's go grab two other bonds here. So I'm going to go back over to the Yahoo Finance page. Uh, notice this bond, first bond we grabbed, had a really, really uh, early maturity date. It matures this year. Um, if we had a longer obligation to cover, then we might want to look for a bond that matures much later than that. So let's go ahead and look for a maturity range of at least, let's say, 15 years. Um, on a treasury bond. Okay, let's take a look at this first guy here. So he matures January 15th of 2029. You notice the settlement date is the same. January 23rd. Uh, maturity date is a little bit different here. We have January 15th, 2029. Coupon rate was 2.5%, yield to maturity was 1.022%. And again, we're dealing with semi-annual coupon payments. It's gonna have a frequency of two. And rather than having to uh, recompute this, we can actually use a little shortcut trick here. I highlight these columns where we already calculated. I hit Control D and it just applies the same formula, the same pricing formula to the data directly below. And so you'll notice the price of this bond is $120.47 approximately, uh, which is also what uh, what Yahoo is tracking, which is pretty good. Um, let's grab one more bond here. Let's take a look uh, and see if we can actually find a corporate bond that will interest us. Let's look at a corporate bond. Um, let's maybe do a maturity range, let's say between five and 10 years. So we got a short one, we got a long one. Let's go somewhere in between, minimum yield of 2%, let's say. Uh, let's find bonds. Okay, so here we got a list of bonds. Um, let's actually go ahead and use this one. Uh, here's Anheuser Busch. Okay, so notice a non-callable bond. Uh, we can click on it and see all the relevant information. And one thing that's a little bit different about this bond uh, is the settlement date is a little bit later. There's a little bit of settlement risk uh, when you purchase the bond before ownership takes into effect. Uh, maturity, you notice, is January 15th, 2019, so somewhere in the middle between our last uh, two bonds that we had looked at in terms of maturity dates. Coupon rate, 7.75%, so this pays a pretty big coupon. Uh, yields pretty high uh, to maturity is 2.203. And again, this is paying semi-annual coupon payments. Uh, so we can go ahead now and verify the price is indeed $125.96. Uh, and the duration you'll notice is between uh, our first two bonds. So um, that concludes the tutorial on how to find data on bonds using Yahoo Finance and how to import this data and find the prices and durations of the remaining cash flows on these bonds uh, using the built-in Excel tool. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Stay posted for uh, some remaining videos in this series.